good day everyone welcome once again to this channel this channel created to be able to share a lot of well engineering details and drilling operations learnings from drilling operations we will not proceed without saying a huge thanks to everyone who has commented who has shared who has liked and most especially subscribed we thank you very much and today's topic will be going ahead to discuss drilling rigs locations where they work in and how we categorize them and before we proceed just go ahead to show the outline so the outline of our presentation is going to be as follows we're going to talk about the types of drilling rigs talk about the location and equipment categorize categorization we're just that's trying to categorize them and basically on the type of equipment and the location where they work talk about the criteria for selecting these mobile offshore drilling units speak about drilling rigs and basically the operating depth and um, we'll go ahead to show this rig in pictures now this is the the sequel to all the presentations we'll be making with regards to the fundamentals of subsea drilling operations this is a, pretty much an outline to the kind of rigs that will be that, that we use to drill these wells we'll be going into detail in subsequent presentations so this just pretty much gives an overview and on a basic understanding for us to understand this type of rigs, why we choose them uh, in the different terrains where they operate. So moving straight to the next slide, we have types of drilling rigs. The two main classifications, uh, we have rigs that can work offshore and rigs that can work onshore. Um, I have in red rigs that can work onshore because we will not be discussing them today. We'll be moving straight into rigs that drill offshore. And we have two basic categories ones that are supported that support themselves on bottom that that sit on bottom or those that float and going straight into that category of um rigs that are supported on bottom we have the barges and we have the jackup rig for the barges it could, it could, it could either work at the arctic regions could be a bottled barge or could be a posted barge then for the jackups can be categorized um, with regards to the support type and the kind of leg which it carries. For the kind of legs, you can either have the column type rigs or the truss type or what you might call the lattice, lattice design. Then for the support type, we have the mat or the spot can. So for the mat type, it's pretty much a um, support system that you have a mat, we have the legs all connected to the mat sitting on bottom. While for the spot can, all the legs are independent, have the spot can at the bottom, penetrate um, through the soil until it or, or, until there's a no-go. Then it stays there, we will test and ensure that we have um, um, a stable environment for the rig to sit before we commence operations. Going back to the legs, we have the column type and the truss type. Um, I would say clearly that all the rigs all the new generation jackup rigs now have the lattice type and the tr or the truss type for obvious reasons the if you look at the lattice type which will show as we proceed it has a sort of design that can run through very deep depth so when the waves um, impact on this um, on the truss type it, it, it in no way can it deform it the column stands a huge chance of being deformed by water waves moving straight into the floating rigs we have two ma two major categories the, the, either the semi submersibles or the drill ship now as the name um as the name says floating so these rigs pretty much don't sit on bottom they float so for the semi submersibles um they are classified based on the structural support or the way they are positioned for the structural support for the semi -sub submersibles you have the bottle type or the column type ways which they are positioned they are either positioned by the dynamic positioning system or they are anchored onto the location where the well will be drilled for the drill ships they are classified based on the positioning system same way the semis are classified either they are anchored on position or you use the dy dynamically positioning system to get them in place just to illustrate a bit on the dps system it pretty much works with thrusters which help to keep the rig in position automatically so it has um the, the the location details of that position 
either Northern and Eastings or long not that is basically because it has to be a planar system when the rig is about to drift automatically the thrusters help which is at the bottom of the of the ship or the semi the thrusters help to nudge the rig back to position and keeps it in position regardless of how bad the heave sway surge roll everything that every, every movement with regards to a ship or a vessel no matter how bad it is on that vessel the trusters always try to keep it back on location so moving straight into the location and equipment categorization um what you see you can see my pointer here in red what you see here in blue are rigs classified based on the equipment that you rig up on surface so for the land swamp and shallow offshore and um, rigs they work with surface blowout preventers and most times if you have a sub a surface and um, well controlled system it is most likely that the christmas tree that's the final equipment that will be that will be installed in place or nippled in place to for 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 to control the well will be dry as well so we'll be rigged up on surface in red moving into deep water and ultra deep water what you can see in red is will be while drilling will be controlled using the subsea blood preventer so what do we mean subsea it's going to be sitting on bottom on the well on the seabed and when we are done drilling the well whatever christmas tree that is going to be installed there is going to be on the seabed so that's pretty much what we are trying to explain with this clear category and um, clear categorization what are the criteria for selecting a mobile offshore drilling unit now they are various clearly you've been we've been hearing us speak about water depth water depth in the last two slides so that tells us clearly that water depth is a major criteria for choosing these rigs so some other um some other criteria for selection cost is a huge one in deep water you could either use the semi or you could use the drill ship now it's very important that you you know you also understand the field development plan because for example if you go ahead to choose the drill ship and the and your budget and your budget does not support the field development plan you might overspend and we all know that um, the idea of drilling wells, the idea of getting hydrocarbons to surface, the idea of producing wells is to make profit. So if at the end of the day, you develop the field and, you, and your cost is greater than your, your cost is greater than your revenue, you definitely run at a, you run at a loss. So it is always smart that, you've, that whatever rig you're gonna be selecting fits that fits the, the field development plan that at the end of the day, you're making profit. Finally, the, the, the distance from shore, I like to speak about the distance from shore and most especially the weather conditions. The, the, you can use, this, you can use the, the, the semi-submersible and you can use the drill ship to drill um, deep water or ultra deep water. But what about the weather conditions? If the weather conditions are very harsh, Preferably, you would like to use the semi, or it will be advised to use the semi to drill in that environment because the semi is more sturdy and will be more stable in that environment. If you're drilling very far away from shore, perhaps an exploration well very far away from shore, it will be most advisable to use the drill ship. That is, if that environment is not in, is that that is, that location is not doesn't have harsh it's not a harsh weather environment so if you need deck space if the if you need a um, capacity to be able to carry a lot of equipment and you're moving very far away from shore it will be nice to consider the, the the drill ship even though it is expensive that way you reduce the logistics cost of having um, the supply vessels the production supply vessels move to and fro from the shore down to the location where you're drilling because already on the drill ship you are carrying enough supplies to support you for a very 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 long um, very very long period then finally availability 
the rig has to be available. You would not want to spend millions of dollars in logistic of logistics costs to get the rig from somewhere very very far away from your location. If there is a, a rig nearby that you could use to drill the well and you can quickly contract, but at the same time must be able to drill the wells planned and also safe to deliver the wells that you have planned to drill. Why not? Then finally. I would like to talk about safety. I mentioned it while speaking on availability. Whatever rig you're choosing to drill your wells must be safe. You need to be able to drill those wells and deliver those wells in, 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 in a very safe and optimized manner. We'll be speaking about these rigs based on operating depth, um, moving from left to right, talking about drill ship and some isomers. They operate at depths of up to 12,000 feet while moving to the right we have the jackal brig at the drilling barge i don't want to talk about we're not talking about um onshore drilling operations so i won't be speaking about the land rig however jackal brigs now we know can operate of up to depth of 500 feet while the the barge will operate very shallow depth and finally like we spoke on the the last three slides the kind of trees that you like to install so for this for the for for the drill ship and semi submersibles that's the the guys shaded in blue you will definitely be running a wet tree at the bottom here to cap the well then for the rig for the wells that to the right shaded in red definitely everything you're going to be you're going to be rigging up all the all the christmas trees you're going to be rigging up will be dry trees This pretty much are the pictures of what this rig look like. What you see here is the swamp barge. Then we have the jackup. These are the the legs, the the lattice legs. The, we have the heli deck somewhere here. Then this is the semi submersible. So you have um, the pontoons here. You have the derrick here. You have the cranes that will be lifting equipment from the from the vessels will be that will be bringing them um, equipment and um all the supplies you'll be needing to location then finally you have the drill ship the drill ship we have the derrick here you can see the derrick here and you can the we have our, our heli deck it's going to be somewhere around here then all of the equipment um the deck the deck space is somewhere here and um a rotary table somewhere up here so um thank you very much for listening we will be going into very detailed um, discussion about these rigs one by one how they are chosen how um how they operate things that we should look out for especially when mobilizing them and using them to drill our wells all the things we need to look out for will be discussing in detail this is just for us to get a, a full overview on these rigs and how we choose them for our operations once again Thank you very much for listening. Please do not forget to make your comments, like, share, comment, and most especially subscribe so that you can get our future updates. Thank you very much once again for listening. Bye for now.